Hi everybody, it's Miss Julie. We are gonna have an art lesson today. Today we're gonna be doing an ocean scene. This is something we did recently in pre-K class, so if you were there, um, it might be uh, a little more easy for you to follow along because you've did it before, or maybe you missed the class, um, so you're learning it for the first time, or you want to just uh, be able to make this project again. Uh, so the materials we're gonna need today is paper, um, a pencil, I'm gonna use a pen just so you can see a little bit um, darker over here, but um, anything to draw with basically. Okay, um, if that's all you have, then that's fine. You can just draw it and stop there. Um, and you can color it when you're done with whatever you have. Um, if you wanna color along with me, what colors you'll need is uh, yellow and blue. Um, okay, and then um, a color of your choice. So I'm gonna choose pink. Um, but it can be any color that you want, okay? Um, the additional colors I'm gonna use are, um, if you have them, are green and uh, yellow. We already have yellow, so uh, just green. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, in the ocean, we're gonna do, it's pretty simple, we're gonna do a fish, and this is an easy way to draw a fish, okay? You're gonna look at your paper, and you're just gonna draw a circle. You can be big or small, Okay, after you have your circle, that's your fish's body. Okay, we are going to put on a tail. It kind of looks like a triangle. One, two, three. We connect it. There's his tail in the back, kind of like a blowfish. Okay, right up in the front, we have a big fish eye. So we're going to draw a circle and another circle right inside that circle. That circle inside, we're gonna color in. Fishes have a big, dark eye. The circle around it, okay? Underneath, we can give him a little fish mouth, okay? And then in order to swim, what does he need? He needs a fin. So this also looks like, tri like a triangle, but this time we're not connecting it. So it's just gonna point this way. One, two. See, we don't connect it. There's his fin, and we can also give him some gills. Three little lines like that, okay? Does anybody know what that's for? That's so he can breathe. Okay, so there's our fish. Simple fish, now we can color him. So I chose, I'm going to be using a chalk pastel. Now you might wanna use crayons, uh, that's probably the easiest, markers, colored pencils, or um, if you're allowed to paint, you can use uh, paint, tempera paint or watercolor, depending on uh, how thick your paper is. You want thick paper for tempera or watercolor. If you have a real smooth surface like this, this is kind of flimsy paper, chalk pastel works good. Um, so it's a little bit messy. You'll have to wash your hands afterwards. I like to use them on their side. And just kind of, kind of, it just colors real fast and then his tail, okay? And then using a little tissue or your finger, the tissue is good so your fingers don't get too messy because we're gonna be using other colors. Okay, so see, I could do it with my finger like that, but then I gotta be careful to leave some other fingers for other colors. So I blended that in, there's my fish, okay? Now, step two. Oh, I forgot to tell you that you want to get some scissors too for this project, okay? If you don't know how to cut scissors, I mean cut that yet, then you can ask somebody to help you. Okay, you want to be very careful and make sure you ask. All right, so we're going to cut out the fish. Do the best you can to cut out without cutting through his body. Okay, so even if it's going around and you miss some, then maybe a parent or sister or brother can come in and help you get the detail. That's what we did in class. It's always good to try. Okay, sometimes I like to cut big like this and then go in later and get all the fine tuning. So see, if that's all you can do, then that's fine. And if you want, you can try to cut right along the lines like that, okay? Cutting around his tail, up around the top, 
and I'm see I'm holding him with one hand and bracing him with the scissors with the other. Okay, so there's my fish. I'm gonna set him aside while I work on this scene, okay? So we'll put him down here. Let's get a new paper. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our paper let me show you. So if you have it long ways, top to bottom, that's from vertical or in art, we say a portrait setting. If you have it like this, that's called landscape setting, which is horizontal. Okay. This is what we want for our setting. We want it to be horizontal or a landscape because we're actually creating a landscape. Our landscape is in the ocean. So we're going to fold this paper in half. You can do this on the table. It's a little bit easier than in the air. Okay, I'll use this like that. Okay, crease it so when you open it up, you can see the line. Okay, we're going to draw right on that line so we know our horizon. That's called the horizon line. All right, so I'm going to take my marker again so I can show you. And we're going to just split that right down the middle or wherever your crease is. See? Okay, so there's our horizon line. We have the top and the bottom. This is going to be the ocean. So what do you think this is going to be? The sky. That's where we need those two main colors. Okay? The ocean is what color? Blue. And the sky uh, can be blue. But today um, we're going to use yellow since we're already using blue. Um, we're going to use yellow like it's bright in the morning. The sun is shining. Sometimes the sky is just really, really bright. So we're going to use yellow. If you want to use blue, I recommend using a different blue so you can know where your ocean stops and where your sky starts. OK, so that's up to you. So I'm going to start with my yellow and I'm going to do the same thing that I was doing before, although this is a lot smaller. But I'm just going to kind of color my sky. Now, because it's chalk pastel, it's going to blend. So I didn't have to do that too perfectly because I can blend the rest in to the corners and the spots that I missed. If I wanted to make a sunset, I could add another colors and those would blend really nicely with chalk pastels. You can pick up chalk pastels at the art store and I heard that Michael's is uh, doing curbside pickup. So if you have a chance and some extra money and you need some supplies, that option is available. Okay, otherwise just use what you got. All right, so now we're gonna do the ocean do a nice turquoise. I have a few blues, but why not turquoise? Now I'm going to blend in my ocean. Let's get a new spot. See, so you don't mix up the colors that you don't want. Okay, there we go. So now we clearly can see where our ocean is and where our sky is. So now is a good time to actually we're going to get uh, we need a way to stick on our fish. So either some tape or some glue um, is good to have too. So let me grab that real quick. Okay. I like to use glue sticks, but I have this handy. So I'm just going to take a little piece of tape, fold it. That way I can move my fish too if I decide I don't want him where I first put him. All right, so where are you going to put your fish? Is he going to be swimming at the bottom of the ocean? The top? Maybe he's jumping out. Maybe he's over here swimming away. Maybe he's coming. Maybe he's right in the middle. It's up to you. I think today I'll put him in the middle. Okay, so you can stop there if you want, or now's the time where you can get creative 
and add any more things that you want into your sky or into your ocean. So let's think about that. What are some things that would be in the sky? I can think of mountains. Um, maybe there's a sun. Maybe there's clouds. Maybe there's rain. Maybe there's a rainbow. Maybe there is birds. Those are some ideas. Um, and in the ocean, there could be some seaweed or some shells, some sand at the bottom, uh, maybe some other fish, if you want to try to do some other fish or like a starfish, something like that. So uh, to keep it kind of simple so we can all try to do this, I'm going to just do a little bit of seaweed, some mountains, and a sun, and then we're done, okay? So I'm gonna get green for my seaweed, a bright green, okay? And we're gonna draw a squiggly line. Okay, I'm gonna get a darker green, so I want you to be able to see that good. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing over here. And maybe two more squiggly line. Now this is also something we could have drawn in the beginning before uh, we painted it. Um, okay, so let's see here, there's a hole right there. So now you're gonna do little leaves, okay? Starting from the bottom, they're just gonna loop around like this, as you can see, okay? So start at the bottom and loop like that. Okay, and then it's just going to climb up like a ladder. Loops around, loops around. Okay, can you see that? Let me try the other one with the pen so I can make sure you can see it. So you have your line like that. Loop it around, loop it around, loop it around. See? Squiggly line, loop, and you go up a little higher. You switch to the other side, then to the next side, then to the next side, then to the next side. It's creating like a pattern. Okay. Going back, this was probably a better idea to draw before I colored. Okay, now we're going to color them in, okay? So each of the leaves, you can use different greens and different yellows. Seaweed has a lot of colors in it, sometimes even reds, purples, browns, oranges. And that'll add a lot of color into your picture. But right now, I'm just gonna do green, sometimes I think Simple is nice and sweet. Simple and sweet. Okay, so I got my seaweed. Now, do you think the mountains would go in the water or above the water? They go above the water, unless it's a volcano growing in the ocean. But we will talk about that later. So I'm gonna go right above this line, so off that's the land that you see in the horizon. And I'm just gonna kind of do like a bumpy line up and down, cause that's how mountains work. Up and down. There's the mountains in the diff distance. Oh gosh, and I talked, forgot to tell you about the color for mountains. Mountains can be usually brown, sometimes green. We're gonna use brown. You can use green or brown, depending on the time of year or where you are in the world. They could even be white if they have snow on them or white on the tips. Okay, so there's our mountain line. 
And we only have one more thing. We got the seaweed. Let's darken this. Just be consistent. Mm -hmm. Doesn't work that well when I'm going over the colors. Yep. Okay, the sun. So I'm gonna do a sunset. Sun could be in the sky, but if it's peeking right behind the mountains, it's either rising or setting. And I love ocean sunsets and sunrises. So I'm gonna find a good spot for my sun. Since I have some things over here and some things over here and some things over here, how about we find a spot like kind of in the middle, either this side or this side. That creates balance, okay? So uh, I'm gonna find a little dip. It'll be right here, there's a nice dip. And I'm just gonna do half of the sun peeking behind the mountains. Then I'm going to take my yellow again and darken that spot. There we go. So we can see the sun a little brighter. It can even be orange too. And there you go. There's your ocean setting. If you want to add anything else to it, now's the time. Okay.